So we've been hearing for weeks stocks are expensive and the second stocks actually take a dip, everyone's like it's the end of the world, the Fed is not going to cut rates. We've heard this time time and time again where the Fed is coming out and no one really listens, but the one time that Jerome Powell actually comes out and tells you, hey, we're not going to cut rates as fast as you think, everyone thinks it's the end of the world. We actually filled a gap on the NASDAQ and the S&P looks to be defending the gap. So what this discount in markets, everyone's free freaking you know what out and the question i have for all of you why are you disappointed in this you've been asking for this for an extreme amount of time uh it's back into balance with fear and greed being right at the neutral level as stocks are heading into nvidia earnings and also we can look at similar stocks like super micro stock reports a plan to avoid delisting and subsequently what did the stock do in after hours well let's take a look smci we can see in after hours it's up to basically around 22 21 dollars and uh, a share from 18 up 16 percent roughly the second that news came out so if people are willing to buy smci which I absolutely gave you the biggest haircut and I said, and I told you guys this if you follow the channel for quite some time, once SMCI started coming down off of the 100 triple digit numbers, I basically said, and you guys can go back in the track record, of this thing's going to just go down to 200 weekly moving average. Here we are, 200 weekly moving average and everyone's running away like, you know what? I just find it amusing how we see this time and time again and everyone's discounting. But how can we necessarily profit from this? Well, number one, you could look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA's earnings is Wednesday. The stock is actually pulled back a little bit. I Do I think it's going to have a massive pullback going into Wednesday? Probably not uh, because the fervency of the line, you're defending basically the trend as we've been establishing it, right? Just simply looking at this, we bounce on trend line on Friday. I expect continuation and fervency. Everyone's going to get drunk over the weekend. They're going to forget about this horrible week and then they're just basically going to just be like, oh, it's NVIDIA earnings. SMCI is up. I need to go buy NVIDIA. I need to go buy AMD. I even am a little bit bullish on AMD, and you guys know our track record with AMD. We're not the biggest fans of it from a stock perspective. Not saying they make bad products, but just saying I'm not the biggest fan of AMD, right? And the thing is, the stock has just been getting pulverized, was coming down to this trend line that I was looking at bullish point, but it gapped down. So I was like, okay, gaps are traditionally for buying. We gap down, kind of form like a spinning top candle. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take a stab at it. Added it to the portfolio on Friday, uh, right at close, right? I bought 100 shares in the video because I want to play earnings. I'm going to do a, call, a long data call on it. Uh, on earnings and take advantage of that big spike in the video because I do think the video is going to beat on earnings. And we can jump over to Seeking Alpha just to see what it's saying as well. So like the good old boys, 30 to 7 on NVIDIA. Again, it's not the 36 to 2 like last time. There's some naysayers, but let's see how this all plays out. I suspect it may be 33 to 4. In the end, I do think some of these ones are going to switch over going to the earnings. So make sure you guys stay tuned for all the market updates that are coming out prior to NVIDIA. I'll throw out the play probably in this video of what I would be doing with NVIDIA towards the end when we talk about the levels. But again, how can we profit necessarily off of this? Take a look at the advantage of the markets, right? How can we look to see how we can take advantage? Well, let's see what's on discount, right? Let's just simply look at where the levels were this week and then assess, did we truly break anything? Because everyone's acting like we broke a lot of things. And I would actually say to the contrary, you actually have a perfect uh, bullish setup with a double gap, right? So traditional when you establish a gap and then you gap down below it, when you come back through it, you come back with a huge amount of momentum. Yes, you could be forming a head and shoulders on the stock rate, the S&P and the NASDAQ, but again, a lot of these head and shoulders patterns haven't come to fruition. I've, I've heard time and time again, people say head and shoulders, head and shoulders, head and shoulders. If it's that obvious, people don't necessarily play it doesn't come to fruition that would also require you to come down all the way through the gap on the S&P as you defended it right so you defended the gap we found buyers where we were expecting and subsequently that means that there is a large probability especially with the fervency of Nvidia that we are going to get a bullish reaction going into next week again fear and greed calm down like we showed in the beginning and we go to the Nasdaq the Nasdaq actually started filling part of the gap so looking at the Nasdaq right we see that the gap didn't completely fill and it's still a double gap so the same principle applies but we got a good chunk of it right we filled 50 percent of the gap maybe we get some downward pressure or down open on uh, monday morning 
and then we see right we'll see how futures play out so tonight and then subsequently we can look to see how things are going to play out do i think a war is going to just magically pop off no especially with trump being president-elect I wouldn't expect Israel, a Gaza conflict to necessarily escalate, North Korea, Russia, Ukraine, really. There's nothing geopolitical that's going to erupt into craziness. And also, ask yourself this. If people are willing to buy the most riskiest asset, aka Bitcoin, almost close, closing on an all-time high basis, not closing at all-time highs from a price print point, but closing around 92000 the question is, if everyone's willing to buy Bitcoin, why are they not willing to buy tech? Why are they not willing to go all in on NVIDIA earnings? Because that FOMO fervency is going to come back, right? Bitcoin coming into fruition is going to be the thing that keeps pushing the markets as we've seen time and time again. Bitcoin would go sideways. Markets are like, eh, we don't know necessarily. There's law chopped. But Bitcoin being the riskiest asset again, why aren't they going to buy the rest of the safer assets? That's the natural question I have. Let's dive into the S&P and NASDAQ levels now. So you guys know exactly what you have to pay attention to to know if you're bullish or bearish. As we saw this week, we did say it was buying opportunity dip weeks as we got dip weeks. So let's see what we're, is in store for us on the S&P. So looking at the S&P, it's pretty clear we got a gap to the upside, like I mentioned in the beginning, and that gap is at 590, right? So that's going to be a psychological number that we're going to have to be playing around. It is also where we chopped around that 590 barrier before. So subsequently, if we start pushing back up, we don't see a 583 print or lower, then we're looking towards a bullish week, especially with the fervency of NVIDIA. Again, a lot of these bigger tech companies we're selling off this week. Amazon, Google, Meta took a big hit. NVIDIA didn't necessarily take a big one, but your AMDs, your Apples, your Microsofts, they really haven't been necessarily bull fervency and they've been stalling. They've been waiting for that cash infusion. And NVIDIA again can be that catalyst this week. We don't really even have a lot of news coming out this week. So my play for the week is going to be if we get that 590 rotation, right? So let's say we break above 590, I'm gonna be selling puts and selling spreads all the way up because that means we're coming up through the gap. There's fervency again. We're gonna get above the nine day moving average at 592 and then subsequently 600 break is not a psychological number. 600, nice round 600, it just sounds nice. What sounds even better? Breaking 600, Bitcoin hitting 95,000, right? All these nice things that create this emotional response in people because it's a mass psychology game. Now, well, let's say we break 583.86. Sell, sell, and sell. My risk to reward is pathetic, right? If we look to this, right, risk to reward. Downside, I half a percent. If I'm wrong, I lose. Upside, 2.62%. It's like five to one. And to really know if you're gonna be truly wrong to the downside, right? You got a 1.68% uh, gap fill that essentially brings you down to the 50-day moving average as another buying opportunity. Half a percent versus making 2% and then making a discount of 1.68%. Please explain the bear thesis here. I can't. I simply cannot look at the bear thesis and say this is a good financial uh, way to trade or bet or look at it. Yes, if you bought at like, let's say 600, well, you're feeling a little bit down because, well, subsequently you, you didn't get the best price. Again, the market hasn't given you the best price essentially this entire time. It's been just going up compounded interest. So wait a couple days, wait until NVIDIA, see what everything goes on. If we break 583.86, then you start validating. Okay, that's two weeks of breaking lower lows. And now the question is, are you actually gonna get that 575 print? Are we coming down to the 50 day moving average? Should I wait to buy back in there? Or you can reinitiate position if you sell, if we break above 583 or 590, right? Okay, you missed out, you make some losses, but subsequently breaking above 590, you're gonna get all that money back on the right up to 600. So again, there's three, four scenarios where I basically make money or make nothing break even to then make more money, or I basically play the bear thesis that hasn't spun out for the past, let's say two years right now. And subsequently, especially with a populist administration coming in, it's harder to say that we're gonna be in bad times, especially when inflation really hasn't been the focus for the Fed. Remember, the Fed has shifted focus to jobs. Even though we got this crazy realignment of cuts, it's still 61%. Okay, it's not 80%, we're right back to square one where we were three days ago, where we simply were at this. So please 
for the love of you know what, explain to me how this bear thesis is going to work out. Again, we're not even in fear territory on the fear and greed. Now, caveat for all the bulls out there that are thinking they want everything, if you break 583 at 36, yeah, that is, that is basically a bad day. That is a subsequent break of the week. And we'll really know if futures open and we're just green, we're having a 1% open and we don't gap fill. Okay, 600 is the least of our worries. We're looking at 610, crazy NVIDIA earnings, right? The fervency would be off the charts at that point. So don't count these bulls out. The same way we can jump over to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has a eerily similar story with a bigger gap. Okay. So NASDAQ, how will we play this? Okay, subsequently, we are not gonna look at 484. We're gonna look at 494, right? 494 is the low pivot of the week. Also the 50 day moving average down here. So first of all, if we don't make a weekly lower low and we don't break the 50 day moving average, how is this bearish? Okay, problem solved. Again, risk to ward, downside potential 0.4%, let's say half a percent to nearly 4% upside. Guys, I cannot make 10 to 1 trades not work. I have to be betting bullish. I'd be stupid if I wasn't betting bullish right now because subsequently 10 to 1. Please tell me where this doesn't work out mathematically in someone's favor in the sense of if you just follow the pattern. Again, I'm, tr I'm trying to not be flippant about it, but it's really, really hard to put a bear thesis together here even though I like putting bear thesis together. Again, I spent a good chunk of time telling you about bear thesis. But 503.33 break, sell puts all the way up. NVIDIA is going to be crazy. And also we're going to talk about the implied volatility, how VIX just recently spiked and what it means for everything in just a moment. But again, 503 to 508 gap fill is going to be pathetically easy to play. 515, a break on the NASDAQ, especially when NVIDIA earnings NASDAQ could do 2-3%. So be careful going into NVIDIA earnings of any bearish positions because that could be a huge catalyzed move. I think when NVIDIA your bearish move is going to be unexpected if it occurs it could be massive but again with smci and stocks like that and amd basically the, the semis have been basically being down so nvidia is going to be the light switch it's going to either create the bear thesis or it's going to create the massive bull run i personally think that Betting on the video to be a bear would be poor because it's like a 75% chance that's going to be bullish. So again, yes, it can happen, but the odds are stacked against you. And that's not necessarily where we want to be. We want to be betting on the sides of the odds stacked in our favor. That's why I bought shares in order to sell long dated out, uh, basically long outstrike calls, because I want to take advantage of the premium plus the share of appreciation and then scalp the trade. So that is what my plan for the video is. But again, for the NASDAQ, break above 503, sell puts it's as simple as that 515 and even with selling puts you're actually going to get more premium because implied volatility actually spiked on friday so with vix actually going up all the way to 17 and then subsequently pulling back uh, during the day that meant that whoever sold like right at that last hour made the most amount of money because they got already the iv crush on those index options and subsequently VIX is heading back down to this $12 number. I currently have VIX calls because I want to hedge against any possible risk. And there's a big, big gap on VIX. So again, this the tendency that VIX doesn't have to fill the gap, it can, but we're gonna be expecting to have some volatility, which is gonna be great for selling premium as bull runs occur, because everyone is not necessarily looking towards the bear side. So yes, this could move quickly against you. That's why you have insurance. And subsequently, I do hope VIX stays up in this elevated level because selling premium then is gonna be more fun as Donald Trump throws in more volatility in the markets along with Jerome Powell. It's great for those that sell options in the market. If you guys wanna learn more about that, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. We talk about options and theta mining and dividends all the time and give you these levels out for free. Discord in the description below as well if you wanna check that out. Now, how would I be playing the video? Well, let's take a look in the video. Let's take a look at what it's doing and let's jump over to the other chart real quick so you can see what I'm thinking about on the video. So subsequently, we did have a sell signal in the video, but it did curl late on Friday. So this is, we filled all the gaps, the fair valuation gaps that we've had on the indicator right here, which is basically an area of where price is now stabilized. Okay, so price is now stabilized, going into earnings, bullish trend, 65% how am i supposed to bet bearish against this everyone the, the, throw in the comment section explaining the bearish thesis on the video please because i simply cannot understand that 
I expect this thing to blow out earnings. We also saw a large amount of smart money buying earnings at 146. So if they're buying at 146 and it's 141 right now and they're not selling crazy, why? why? Because they see this thing going to a stupid evaluation on earnings and thus being the number one company in the world, it's just insane about this. So again, this is where I'm like, okay, everyone wants to give you this opinion, but explain the, the facts here. The facts are smart money is buying. Usually they don't lose money. They're paying a higher premium than the current stock price. Therefore, they see a higher premium in the future for that, right? So if NVIDIA is not gonna drop to 124, then subsequently, why would they be buying in this higher appreciated area as the election went on, right? So again, also with deregulation and stuff like that, that should help the stock out as well and the entire tech industry as a whole, along with a booming economy. So people have more money, spend more money, NVIDIA gets more business. As simple as that. And let's jump over to the positions and I can explain to you what I'm kind of thinking for NVIDIA and how you actually can trade NVIDIA yourself. So here we have NVIDIA and its implied volatility. As you see, it's going to be expanding as we go into earnings, which is subsequently on Wednesday. We're already started getting expansion going into Thursday, Friday. As we head into that earnings, it really gets cranked up. This is why I'm not necessarily going to buy the option chain or sell the option chain until the day of earnings because I want to capitalize on the maximum implied volatility of the move. And I'm sitting right now around 142 a share for NVIDIA. And we can see that the expected move is 155. If we jump back over to the chart, we can clearly see that 155 off the current price point would be about nine to 10%. I think that's gonna be expanded to maybe like a 12. So we have to see and play it safe how this thing all plays out. But going back to the positioning here, we can clearly see that we want to be targeting that 165, 170 level. Again, uh, the prices I give you in this exact video is going to change because implied volatility is going to open theta in the market and how it moves. So subject to change of pricing, but you want to basically go right to that 20 delta option chains if you're wanting to play it uh, bullish. Personally, I'd be selling IV because NVIDIA's implied volatility always get jacked up to insane levels. So going back, I'll be probably selling the 128 call uh, put and buying, let's say the 123. $5 spread, about $500 collateral, makes 73. It's a quick profit for everyone basically holding one day because you're implied volatility is going to completely crush within the first five minutes. So you basically transact this for five minutes. Now, if you want to play it to the bull side, right, then we can start looking at that where it previously was. And NVIDIA previously was around the 150 number. So it's not a huge thing that 150 could be our anchor point for the position. And subsequently, we can, let's say we set, uh, we buy the 150 call and we sell the 150 uh five call as well right so with this we're basically minimizing the amount of money we have to put up front 133 dollars to make 367 that's a pretty good move and we can actually expand it to let's say if we get 160 because there's a lot of open interest around these two numbers 150 160 a 220 dollar uh, option but we make 778 that's pretty nice it's outside the expected move but it would be somewhere where we'd be making a large amount of profit in this transaction. So your maximum profit is going to be that seven hundred seventy eight dollars but the 150 is, I'd be betting 150, 160, 155, 150, right? That's an anchored point just because, yes, it's a little outside the expected move. I do think NVIDIA is going to appreciate prior to um, the option chains. So if you want to buy this going into their earnings, because again, implied volatility is going to help you if you're going on the debit side of transaction. So this is the one that I would basically be putting on Monday, right? This is the transaction on Monday. But for those that want to basically sell the call, uh, sell the put side with the, let's say 130, 123 or the 120, right? The same uh, opposite spread to make 142 versus um, putting up five eight $858. This is where I'd be looking in. I don't see a lot of open interest in the put side. So not a lot of people are betting on the put side. So naturally the market's gonna wanna move towards where the mass consensus is. Again, with the options changes how they are right now and the expectations, we're looking at a bullish reaction from NVIDIA. Again, you can judge how much collateral you want, right? I can make this as transaction 130, 127 base, only gotta put 250. Now you're gonna make less, right? You're only gonna make 60 bucks. But for smaller accounts, that's not actually too bad, right? 250 or to make 60, 
okay, that for about five minutes of work, that's not too bad exactly. So again, looking at that 130, right around that 20 delta and then selling whatever collateral, or sorry, buying whatever collateral to cover, depends on how, what your account size is and everything that also increases your profit margin, but still a safe bet to do on earnings day, right? So the first transaction we do on Monday, the second transaction we do on earnings day to maximize our profits. I personally, because I own the shares, I'd probably be selling like a 170 call on NVIDIA or even let's say a 160 call because even if that stock goes to 160, I can either roll the options to get more premium to lock that in and see how it goes, let it expire, right? Capitalizing on those gains plus the premium. So I got different things. If you're just buying the shares, right? I'd probably be selling the uh, 160 call on earnings day because I want to take advantage of the most amount of premium that is occurring on NVIDIA, sell it, and then possibly roll that call because again, the implied volatility when you sold it and where it goes, you're gonna capture that difference and then you're just gonna have whatever premiums left from the theta afterwards. And maybe the stock pulls back a little bit off of earnings and you see how it goes. You can also roll the call infinitely that we will show as well, depending how badly or good NVIDIA beats earnings, we can see what we are gonna plan and give you an update on the live stream on Wednesday when we're covering NVIDIA earnings. So Fatal is going to give you guys the biggest winners and losers, and we'll be back for the discussion part of the video where we're going to be talking probably about NVIDIA, SMCI, the stock market, pal, and everything. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in just a second. And the second that we go up, we come down. A week after the election, markets have actually fallen 2.38% on the week, and on Friday alone, it lost around 1.32%. Now, taking a look at the next upcoming earnings, we got a big one this week. On Monday, nothing really too notable. Things like Bit Digital, Symbiotic, Bit Deer, I guess. Tuesday, big ones like, for example, Walmart, Lowe's, and uh, Powell. We got Medtronics and a lot more. And then on Wednesday, this is the big one over here, guys. We got Neo. NVIDIA or NVIDIA, whichever one you guys like to say, it. Target, Zim, Wix, Snowflake, Palo Alto, and a lot more. And then on Thursday, we got Baidu, Intuit, uh, and BJ's. And lastly, on Friday, we got Global Blue and Addicts. But the main one here is definitely going to be NVIDIA. It's going to be a crazy, crazy Wednesday. And now taking a look at this past week, we can see that there is a lot of red here, a lot of red, especially in the semiconductors and healthcare, mainly because RFK just got nominated to be the HHS uh, secretary, right? Uh, so we got over here, guys, the worst performer when it comes to the semiconductors being none other than the company. It's actually really easy to find. SMCI losing 24.23%. Actually, my mistake is actually not the worst one. It's actually the company Monolithic Power Systems losing 24.68%. If you guys just take a look at this, the semiconductors just did awful this past week. And the best performer in the entire sector, it is the company Palantir, which is a company I probably should cover again, gaining 12.64%. Looking now into the consumer cyclicals. Remember, they did change this last week. We get over here the worst performer being none other than the company. By the looks of it, guys, it is none other than, ooh, it's a tie. Wow, okay, by 0.01%. Ralph Lauren Corp losing 6.38%, but also DPZ Domino's Pizza, which, by the way, Warren Buffett recently bought, or at least based off of the SEC, um, you know, kind of release. Warren Buffett bought Domino's Pizza, and it did lose 6.37%. And the Warren and the best performer overall, it is the company Tapestry, getting 9.59%. Into now the consumer defensives. We got over here the worst performer. Actually, you guys can see that the packaged foods lost a whole lot. The beverages lost a whole lot, probably once again because of RFK. And Costco apparently lost as well. Nonetheless, though, the worst performer seems to be none other than the company SJM. By the looks of it, seven, uh, yeah, seven, losing 7.39% on the week to now a price of a little bit less than $107. And the best performer, it is Tyson Foods gaining 7.94% on the week. Moving now into the financials, we can see that there's a lot of green here. Worst performer, it is none other than the company. That was that one. No, it's Erie Indefin Indemnity, sure, losing five and a quarter percent. And the best performer, it is Charles Schwab, 
gaining 9.12% on the week. Moving down to the communications sector, you guys can see that Meta lost a whole lot. However, the worst performer was the company IPG, losing 9.19%. And the best performer overall in the whole entire market it is actually Disney, gaining 16.22%. The healthcare sector saw a bloodbath as well, with a bunch of these companies being in the red. Worst performer here, it is none other than the company Moderna, losing 21.31% on the week. But I mean, you got Abvi also losing 17.3%. Might be one that I actually may put some more in, even though my average share price is like near 100 bucks. I'm actually buy some more around this $165 or so. But the best performer, it is none other than the company Dexcom gaining eight and a half percent on the week and moving now into the industrials a lot of there's a lot of deep red not a lot of deep green but it's overall 50 50 aside from the aerospace and defense now that wars are starting to end because of donald trump's nomination or at least not yet but like he essentially just got elected right uh two weeks ago almost two weeks ago yeah we can see that because of all the wars ending all of the aerospace and defense companies are crashing, which is hilarious in a great way because I don't like war. And, and also the fact that because they're crashing, presents us a great buying opportunity, right? We got over here, though, the worst performer being none other than the company. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Seems to be, guys, none other than that was going to be one of these ones. But no, it does seem to be uh, right over here. We got the company. Amentum Holdings losing 24.55% on the week. And the best performer seems to be the company um, Delta Airlines. Actually, no, sorry, it's not. It is the company Rockwell Autom Automations gaining 5.15%. Now, the real estate sector, it is, wow, only a few of them gained here. Worst performer, it is none other than the company uh yeah see no sorry docu no i was gonna say do docu sign health peak properties losing 8.35 percent and the best performer it is uh not a lot of them gain but it is the company vici gaining 0.89 percent of course you gotta take a look at realty income 56 dollars and 54 cents i did buy i think i bought like 10 more shares at around this share price on friday as well so didn't quite catch it sub 50 but you know what i'm catching it right now which it seems to be my average share price regardless into now the energy sector oh wow they really did change it this was not here before not even last week so energy sector we could see that this is very green not deeply in the green but there's a lot of green here worst performer it is diamondback energy losing 2.9 percent and the best performer it is none other than the company it's this one Colterra energy gaining 4.07%, Chevron as well gaining 2.86%. Looking now into the utilities, the worst performer is a company Constellation Energy losing 6.3%, and the best performer it is Elliant Energy Corp gaining 5.59% on the week. And lastly, into the basic materials, this is, wow, there's a lot of red here. Maybe we should definitely start looking into the basic materials a little bit now because this is a whole lot of red. Worst performer here, it is none other than the company, uh, yeah, Newmont, losing 9.13%. And the best performer, it is the company, uh, we got CF Industry Holdings gaining 4.01% on the week. All in all though, very very volatile week a lot of red now what could happen this week especially with nvidia really depends if nvidia does great and i'm talking not just beats earnings but does tremendous guidance then we could see smci being 50 percent on the week right easily but right now unless things really do amp up and unless things really do continue to go up guys this is a great opportunity to buy stocks especially in the semiconductors uh basic materials, healthcare. Yeah. There's a, and even, and even the aerospace in the industrial sector too. So tell me what you guys think. And with that said, that pretty much does it for this segment. Take it away, Mike. So I figure we start off by saying, which side do you think we're going to end at, right? We, we went from greed to neutral right now. Do we now step into fear territory or is it basically NVIDIA earnings? Everyone got drunk over the weekend and time to go bullish. I just realized that it's a 51. <laughs> I just realized that the fear and greed index is a 51 right now. Um, well, I don't, that's actually a really good question because it really just comes down to NVIDIA. And if we take a look at this um, this upcoming week, 
I mean, yeah, we do have a lot of earnings, uh, but the main one is is Nvidia. I mean, we have Walmart, we have Lowe's, we have yeah. Target, uh, but really, the only thing that we care about is Nvidia. And it just so happened that this past week, the chips, the semiconductors, all of them crashed. Every would, single one of them. I wouldn't even say crash, but they were. For the last week or so, they have been very uh, poor performance, especially like if I look at, let's say, SOXX, which is like the um, ETF for chips, hasn't been performing well for literally since the election started, which is right. quite surprising considering that this is supposed to be the bull, right? Uh, the bull the bull ETF. And you, you had a deck cross prior to the election. But I'm like, this could all, again, because of NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA was just staying flat. You had a lot of like ABGO, AMD go down, Intel, like a lot of the, like the smaller other chips, Broadcom and all them, they basically went down lower and subsequently dragged this thing down. But like, if you look at NVIDIA specifically, right? Like if we're talking NVIDIA mm -hmm. because that's the big kahuna for this week. Mm -hmm. I, again, I bought a hundred shares in NVIDIA just because I'm like, okay, line bounced online heading into earnings and it's nvidia right like it's it's a pretty hard case to make to be bearish on this because simply put one day closed but nine day moving average market yeah. selling off 2.47 percent i would not be surprised if we have a one percent gap and go i would not be surprised in the least bit slightest that we open one percent up on the indexes uh futures probably rip all night green and then we do a two percent day to the upside because again Everyone got, got drunk over the weekend trying to forget this damn uh, week. And then subsequently, they're going to be like, oh, it's NVIDIA earnings. Time to go buy. Let's also remember that um, NVIDIA was the one that lost the least in the semiconductors. Uh, yeah. in the strongest this past week. In semis. Yeah. Like every single other one was very deeply, deeply in the in the red. NVIDIA only lost 3.83. Everybody else was like five or more. Yeah, like so you had, like I what was it AVGO got like AVGO lost ten point twenty four, yeah. AMD eight point eight two, uh, Qcom six point oh nine, you know Micron uh, thirteen point nine. So yeah, it was it was a bloodbath when it came to the semiconductors. Yeah. So it's really interesting to see that because now, now, now here's my question: Is SMCI going to be the catalyst for Nvidia's fall? Because SMCI. Have you seen? Did you what was that? see what happened to SMCI? I saw twenty four point two three percent down. I'm aware. Yeah, no, 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 no. You didn't see after hours then. No, I did not. What? All right. So this is SMCI post mar post market. Uh, we're back up. Uh, nearly wiped out all the losses. Um, for the wow. last two days because they announced a plan that they were going to avoid delisting from the indexes. So. Ah. Yeah, so they now basically like, hey, hold, hold the printing press. We are able to save it, right? So if people are willing to do 16% on SMCI. And Almost 17. To, yeah. Almost this is, 17. And this is in low volume trading, right? We have to mm -hmm. see what happens on Monday when we go to open. And if SMCI does like a 50% day, does that mean that people are willing to step up to buy NVIDIA on Wednesday? I would argue yes. yes. If you're willing to, number one, and this is why like everyone... It's funny where everyone was begging for a pullback. They get the pullback, and now they think the whole world is ending. I'm like, ending. That's usually how it is. Yeah, That's usually time. how it is. Again, it's like you want the pullback until it happens, and then you start worrying, like, oh no, yeah. um, are, is what everything going to zero? Yeah, exactly. But like, yes, SMCI. Would I buy SMCI? No. Um, no. For the sheer fact that I don't believe in buying stocks that literally fell nearly. 80, once you cross that eighty percent barrier, I'm I'm like, no, I, I draw the line there. Um, well, it depends what the well. Hang on a minute, because because for all you know, fundamentally speaking, it was it, now it's a correct valuation to buy it at. You know. Yes. Fundamentally. And no, right? Like. Yes Cisco, and yes. It does. Yes. Cisco, it okay, depends. Like, it depends, Mike. It depends what the fundamentals say, because we have seen a lot of companies get that massive hyperbolic rise and then come crashing down, and they're good companies i'll give you one example Are you ready sure generac all right so let's pull up Gen what is generac and Gener gnrc i think it was, i think it is GNRC. or is it just gen no it's What's it's the gnrc my guy it, it, it doesn't matter generac we we all know that generac fell a lot 
yeah. right? But we also like we saw that massive point. rise, and look at what it's at right now. It fell sub a hundred bucks. Yes, lowest point was sub a hundred bucks. But now, so okay. right now, it would be considered a good time to buy generic according to yes, the fundamentals. SMCI could follow the same yes. trend. But the thing is, the stock is now proving that it can recover. Would I be buying it at eighty-two percent haircut? No. Once it got above, let's say the 70 percent mark, that's when I say, okay, there's some life. The chart is proving that it has some life in it again, right? Like when it started doing this uptrend again, that's when I'd be looking at it. I want a lot of people will look at SMCI now, right? And say it's a good buy now. I'm like, I want the chart to prove out if it's going to do this, right? Once it starts proving out, then I'm willing to make the argument, but I'm not gonna buy it at 80 to 70% off just because the risk to reward is not there. Now, from a, from a technical perspective, from a fundamental perspective, it could be a completely different story. I don't true, know because I haven't taken a look history. at the fundamentals of it in a little bit, but I'm just saying from a technical perspective, you're waiting for the chart to start curling back up, not from a fundamental perspective necessarily. True, but strong, fundamentally sound stocks don't fall 85%. That's what I'm saying. It could have been overvalued like how Generac was. Yeah. but You get my also, point? Well, we'll see about that. But anyway. Um, another one that going back to the whole Nvidia thing, but first of all, Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin just creaming everyone that's bearish on it. And the thing is, I keep going back to this thesis: if you're willing to buy Bitcoin at ninety-two thousand, why aren't you willing to buy the market? And sure. the Fed also uh, this week basically everyone's saying the pullbacks because of Jerome. I'm I'm like looking at this. I'm like, no, the pullback was because everyone got way too ahead of themselves on Wednesday night. And then reality hit, buyer's remorse hit Friday. So that, that's yeah. what I think happened, right? That's my personal opinion. Because all Jerome did was tell you that, well, sim simply put, Jerome basically said the, how to put, how to put this, um, no r need to hurry rate cuts. And I'm just like, okay, that's fine, right? I don't care for a rush to rate cuts. And then the thing is like, if we look at the CME tool, me and you were discussing this on election night where mm -hmm. we were in the same exact spot with the odds as we were a week ago. So it's like we're not even shifting to a true pause in December, right? It's just instead of 80%, you got a 61%. But you were but you gladly bought the market on Wednesday last week when it was 61%. So what has right. fundamentally changed? Nothing. In yeah. reality, nothing. And here's the bigger part, right? Like you have the NVIDIA earnings, you have SMCI news over the weekend. Nothing's mm -hmm. gone on really in the Middle East. And then you have- Actually, the, well, no, no, things have gone on in the Middle East. We got wars ending. Yeah, well, I meant like no one's popping off again, right? Like although everything's mm -hmm. coming down, right. there's no catalyst to the downside. There's no, right. no, Iran's not just gonna magically pop off now because, you know, sane leadership is back in town. But- Correct. If we look at like Monday, we got Fed speakers again, they can keep talking for several next weeks and we're gonna be seeing more and more of them basically come out kind of, you know, job owning type thing. And obviously they're gonna be talking about um, t t tariffs and all this and about inflation and all that bull crap that they love to talk about. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna get housing data on Tuesday. Wednesday, we get pretty much nothing going all the way into Thursday. We just got existing home sales and Philly uh, employment trends not a big catalyst so the main event is going to be nvidia and as i was we were recording this uh, this actually got revised from 30 to 7 to 31 to 6 again i would not be surprised wow. if it was just 33 to 4 or 3 by the end of the week right they're ready well, not revised. by the end of the week but by wednesday yeah essentially by when nvidia reports i would not be surprised if this number is already shifting into positive revision territory they're expecting 33 billion dollars in revenue definitely wow. something nvidia can deliver on considering that they've done it time and time and time again yep. and i they just recently confirmed a purchase of another company or a stake in some company so companies just don't magically do that if they don't have money to spend right like if nvidia wasn't going to hit their revenue targets they wouldn't be doing this stuff so you're 100 percent correct on that yep yeah so it's like um, okay, explain to me where the bad news is coming from right and actually, even last quarter, they got very, very close to that 33.07 billion. They did 30.04 billion. So, yeah, it was, they did, yeah, they did, like you said, uh, reported 30.04 billion in their last earnings. Mm -hmm. And then their current mm -hmm. earnings expected 33, I say 36. 
I, I think you said that, 36. I think. Yeah, yeah. I would argue. I would argue. Look, yeah. I would say 35, 36. 26 to 30. So that's uh, 4K. So if you do four, if they, um, they're expected, they usually beat, like if we look at their, la they always beat by two, uh, 2 billion, or 2 billion, 2 billion uh, consistently. So 33, so let's say 35, 36, right? Depending on mm -hmm. what the quarter is. Also, mm -hmm. they're heading into more demand territory. Uh, as we head towards the end of the year, companies kind of want to uh, get all the purchases, finish up all the CapEx, burn all their CapEx. So again, this quarter mm -hmm. traditionally would be the one that would get most amount of money in. So, yep. So anything else you want to go over? Not really. Again, it's the main thing that occurred. The biggest catalyst of the year already happened. And we can see that markets, well, within that week, markets rallied. And okay. now the following week, markets are kind of tumbling back down. So it's it's kind of, especially especially uh, pharma companies. Oh, oh man, because of RFK right now. But yeah, it's like, they are reeling. Like, pharma companies, they're always so chop volatile. I'm like, you guys are complaining about this. This has been the, the industry for the past three decades, right? Like as long as I remember bio companies, it's like up 200%, down 100%, up 200%, down 50%. I'm like, you guys, this yep. is how the normal industry trades. Like in what universe do you think you're living in? The whole entire healthcare sector was mainly in the red, mainly in the red. Was your, was so, your beautiful UNH in the red? My beautiful UNH was in the red, uh, but it's still above, well, it's still very close to that $600 though. Uh -huh. um, it's at 592. I would begin buying it again if it was like at around like sub 500. So. Okay. So you, you, want, you yeah. basically want back down to 200 weekly. Right. Roughly, yeah, but I mean, I would have to do the the discount free cash flow again just to see it, um, just to see it, see yeah. like where, where I land and that kind of stuff. One of the interesting things that I saw was the Russell right coming back through that gap fill, but not really filling. It, it filled the gap partially, like we saw the Nasdaq and the other indexes. But I'm genuinely curious to see what it does this week because again, Russell is one of those that runs like crazy, and I've been looking to pick some of it up um, on a trade recently. But I'm mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if it comes down to that 50 because again, I go I'm like there's no everyone is saying one way. I mean, most of retail is always wrong. So if they're saying oh the end of the world tariffs Fed like all this stuff right, and then they're just like piling into the bearish thesis now. I'm like okay, time to go buy stuff because it's just fun. Also, another group of companies that may be interesting to look at, I uh, maybe do more research on, it is the aerospace and defense. All of them fell this past week. I mean, Lockheed Martin fell 5.27, Northrop Grumman 6.62, uh, Mr. Boeing over there falling uh, 6.6. 6. Yeah, Mike, I'm I looking at you. I saw, yes, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm in Boeing right now, so we're gonna see because like, this thing has been, like, if you just look at Boeing, right? Just looking at this, this thing has just been falling off a cliff. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm like, when Boeing was heading to that $100 mark, because it's a psychological number for Boeing, I'm just like, 47% from the local high, uh, from all time highs, Boeing was four, it's down 67%. I'm like, and you're in this area right here of where there is a lot of people that, find the consensus for Boeing. And I'm like, yeah, you're kind of getting to the bottom of it. So maybe we play a bullish bounce. And I was looking at the indicators. I'm like, okay, this is actually looking bullish. So and may by the way, over, but maybe not. And by the way, the the number one performer this past week, you know which one it was? Uh, probably had to be REITs. Disney. Really? The Disney, 16.22% on oh, the week. they had our earnings. That's cheating. That's a cheat code. <laughs> there yep. is a cheat code. All right. Disney. Well, that was probably gonna by, I think that you was know, the best. You, you know who the next uh, big performer is going to be this week? NVIDIA probably. No, SMCI. NVIDIA could be either be the no, or SMCI. SMCI. Actually, yeah. if, if NVIDIA does good, SMCI will do a 50% day because everyone's going to go euphoric over that thing again. Easily, especially being this cheap. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 18 bucks. Come on. 19 bucks. Yeah, absolutely. But. So. Yeah, I think the I think that's essentially all that's going to happen this week. It's going to be an interesting week. Um, yeah, I mean we're just waiting now to pretty much the end of the year. Yeah, I think I think Santa the Claus next route. catalyst will be the I think the next catalyst is going to be January six, where the new Congress and the new Senate. Um, yeah, happen. the debt ceiling and everything also coming in January February. But I think that you'll kind of 
the biggest threat is the S, uh, SEP from the Fed on December okay, that's fair. 18th because you are going to kind of get a temperature reading of where rates are going to go, but also you're going to get a job, another job report, right? So those, is the previous job report a fluke? Is it not a fluke? Uh, you're going to get the PCE reading. You're going to get a bunch of stuff. But again, this is the Santa Claus rally time. Everyone wants the markets to run. Right. And the problem is that everyone's looking at the, like this bearish theory, but I'm like, okay, nothing broke. Like I have all these checks in place to see if something's breaking. The problem is I haven't freaking found anything that's breaking. And I'm like, okay, well, one plus one equals two. So therefore have to buy. Like it's as simple as this. Yeah. Like everyone's magically expecting Nvidia to magically have like negative earnings or something. I'm like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I suspect Nvidia gonna knock out earnings again. It's I like, think so as well. It's like a broken yeah, record with that so company. Well. I think so as well. So, but aside from that, that really is it. All right. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. We'll have our latest video queued up over here. So if you guys want to check that one out, if not, we'll see you on the Monday video. Thank you all so much for watching and peace.